Captain America Civil War is a story that, that we couldn't have done years and years ago because it really focuses on all of the heroes that you've met up to this point in the Marvel Universe. It's a Captain America film. It's the third film in the Captain America trilogy, but it also is a film that has a very important place amongst all of the other films we've made, in particular the other Avengers films. Um, and by this point, people know Steve Rogers very, very well. People know Tony Stark very, very well. And we felt it was time to see them, because we know their personalities so well, we know how they work together, and we know that they have some issues with each other. They're very, very different people. And how would they react if they were faced with an issue that they just disagreed about? And there's an amazing storyline from the comics called Civil War, which is one of the best miniseries that publishing has produced since I've been at Marvel for 15 years. Um, and in it, there is, the, uh, there is a, an event that occurs um, that causes the governments of the world to say, we need to have oversight over these heroes now. And in our story, that oversight is basically because of the collateral damage caused during all of the action sequences of the other films. It's really interesting to see Tony Stark grow as a character over these films to a point where, you know, if, if you were to just say on a surface level, well, who would agree to take orders from an authority figure and who wouldn't? Well, you'd think Captain America, who was a soldier in his own right, would agree to it. And Tony Stark, who's gone in front of the U.S. Senate, and said, I'm not playing along with you guys, would not want to do it. So it's very interesting to see them very naturally and realistically grow to the opposite viewpoints. You know, so much of the Civil War story is told from Captain America's point of view. We've brought in Tony Stark to, 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 to showcase that other side of that argument, and it's really the two of them and the people that team up with them. But at the same time, we thought it would be fun to introduce a third side to introduce a character that audiences have wanted us to introduce for many, many years, and who comes in and is really not agreeing with either side in particular and can represent sort of fresh eyes to, to see Tony's side of the argument, to see Cap's side of the argument, and frankly, to not necessarily care about either side of those arguments because he has his own agenda, and that's T'Challa the Black Panther. And we've been seeding the notion of the Black Panther, the nation of Wakanda, where he comes from, uh, has been seeded going back to Iron Man 2. Um, so it really felt like this was time, and to bring in somebody who had his own agenda, independent of either the Captain America side or the Tony Stark side. Um, and, uh, and we've cast an actor named Chadwick Boseman, who's unbelievable, and who is one of the best actors working today. What's fun about this movie is it's very much a Captain America film. Um, Tony Stark is very much a character, main player in it, in that film. Um, and we get to see the two sides of their personalities, the two sides of their, of their, of their viewpoints on the world, on how the Avengers should operate. <clears throat> but at the same time, while it very much is a culmination of all of the other films before it, it's also a direct sequel to The Winter Soldier. We follow Bucky Barnes, we follow the continuing story of The Winter Soldier, who Captain America cares very much about, and who believes he can get his best friend back. He believes his best friend is in there somewhere. So we follow that journey it, it, that's a very big part of this movie. 